Kelsey. Hey, I'm Shane McGalley, and there is no David Keener. <laughs> yeah, Dave ditched us tonight. He uh, uh, kind of forgot, and he's actually at Balticon, which good is a uh, science fiction fantasy convention. So that's a good excuse, at least. So Shay and I were here out already, so we just decided that we were going to record something anyway and just talk about what we're currently working on. We're just going to riff. Really... We're going to riff, right? Yeah. I like it. But, so wait, I've never been to Balticon, have you? I have. Several Is times. Is it awesome? Uh, you know, it's fun. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of the smaller cons. It's, uh, um, you know, it's... I. I I always, I always love going to cons. You know, so like same and, uh, formula, like panelists, vendors, that kind yep, of thing. Yep, same exact, exact, exactly that. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't been to it uh, since the pandemic, and um, I had not made any prior arrangements to um, go to it as an author or anything, or to sit panels or um, anything like I had done in the past, and. Uh, and plus, you know, I had stuff planned this weekend, so uh, yeah, uh, I I didn't go. So we've done an episode from Cap Wave together yeah. in uh, that's also in Maryland, right? Um, but is this like how is this comparatively? Is it bigger? It's a little uh, bit bigger, I think. I don't I don't know what it's like. Uh, I'll be interested to hear a report from Dave next week um, about the about the convention to uh, to see how it actually was. I uh, I'll, I'll be very interested for that. Yeah, I, I don't often get into Baltimore. Um, great place for the aquarium. Go there all the time. But there is another convention that I, I go to there uh, with my dad. We go to LaxCon because we do a bunch of cross tournaments and all. And I'm wondering if it's in the same building because it's it's just a, a huge like another world type. You know, you can get lost in it building. And I bet you it is. Um, perfect, that perfect could be it, the convention center down by the harbor. Well, wait, am I thinking right? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, uh, it's yeah. pretty big. Yeah, absolutely. So I envy Dave. He's probably having a bunch of fun. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Hope he comes back with good stuff to report and share. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, so you asked me what I was working on. Is that what you said before? I yeah. Said I, had a great day. I had a big breakthrough on a novel that has been okay. stymieing me today. What about nice. you? What are you working on? Um, so I am, I'm kind of doing a lot of projects at once now, which can be frustrating because I'm not super good at doing more than one writing project. I'm really good at doing like one writing project, one school project, one work, like I'm good at all that. But when it comes to writing, I have a hard time splitting my time and attention. So I was working really hard on getting overboard ready for publication and going through the edits and all. And then while I was just starting that, I got a really big job um, hired as in, someone hired me as, uh, to edit their book. Um, so it was a really big job and it was something I really didn't want to turn down. So I accepted that and now I'm doing that. Um, and I've been telling myself I'll do, you know, I'll edit one chapter for the client and one chapter for me every day, but that hasn't been working out. I've been just, just doing the client. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think it's better to focus anyways. Yeah. It, it gets your mind uh, in a consistent gear. I'm, I'm forgiving myself because we just did an episode like last week on, you know, how to make money as an author. You know, yeah. what we got to do to stay afloat. So hey, yeah. um, it's got to do it, you know. Yep, I'm happy yep. for it. Um, but yeah, so after that's done, then I'll get back into it. And hopefully we're able to meet my my 2023 goal, which I said publicly on this podcast. So got to stay accountable. So how about you? What was your big breakthrough? Well, I had, you know, I've been uh, working on... Uh, uh, a novel that's kind of different for me. It takes place in contemporary times, and it's a an action adventure um, novel with vampires, okay. and a uh, very popular genre. And uh, uh, I had found <laughs> the, the funny story about this book is I was archiving stuff on my computer, and I found an outline for a novel that I wrote in 1993. Oh man, that's before for I was this, born. For this book, <laughs> and okay. so I, uh, 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 I told myself, "Oh man, it's gonna be awesome! I'll, I'll get it published in 2023, and I can talk about it in the afterwards um, where it came from and stuff." So 
that's really the next one that's going to get out the door. But I, I was having the trouble with a, like a lackluster climax. You know, it wasn't, you know, it was like too easy for the hero. It was, I, you know, and I just hate that. It's, you know, yeah. uh, you know, if they just drip through and it was never, you know, never a hassle or whatever. It wasn't a big challenge. But I came up with a uh, really good twist. Nice. And it's really good. And I love it. I really love it. And um, I'm going to credit one of my friends who I was chatting with online yesterday. And this is a friend from my hometown. She was actually uh, friends with my older brother, Carl, back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had reconnected on Facebook, blah, 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 all of that. And we were chatting yesterday, and she wanted to be a named character that gets murdered in my book. <laughs> and the funny I thing was, was, is that whole, that whole conversation led me down a path that gave me an epiphany. And, and it's gonna and it's uh I got very excited about it and I started writing like crazy and I I love that feel when you know the the log jam breaks and you you yeah. you, you get get through because I was having a having a real hard time I couldn't type the end at the thing because I just wasn't satisfied with it and yeah I know that's it's a very hard thing too when like you know there's something not quite right but you can't quite put your finger on it. You, you kind of diagnosed it with the climax. But I've yeah. had times where it's like, I really love the story. I really love the characters, but like something just really doesn't feel good enough for me. Um, and I have a really hard time sometimes figuring out what it even is. Yeah. So it's really interesting how talking to people about it, about stuff. Yeah. And like, open pathways in your in your brain and it, it's, it's really true. yeah it's Sometimes, really interesting so, and we, we talked about this in the podcast before we're saying you know an important part of being a writer is also actually having experiences and living and like going out and talking to people and i i've totally experienced that too where um i realized like man i never would have solved this this story problem if i didn't like go talk to this guy or i didn't go to this place or whatever um so it, it's amazing how true that is you really cannot just hold pull yourself into a room um, your whole life and figure it out that way. You got to get out there. That's right. And the really interesting thing is, so I'm talking to her about it. And um, I started, I was researching as I was talking to her because I, I love research. And I had to have this scene. Um, she happens to live in Texas. And I have it had this scene that was going to take place out west i hadn't decided oklahoma texas you know whatever out there that didn't matter but when she you know started wanting to you know be uh, uh a red shirt in my book i uh started quizzing her about okay where what town do you want this to be what are, and and i started telling her you know give me a description of whatever and you need to find for me a classic diner because there's the scene that that um, I I had to construct you know it takes place in a in a classic diner like yeah. you know out in the outskirts of, of a town yeah so I got to town and I um, uh, started quizzing her about her favorite diners there and <laughs> and it, I she came up with some really great stuff and uh, so the inspiration mode kicked off and then I realized where I had, I had to go with this, uh, with this twist and with this, uh, with the climax. And, um, I need so to be careful heard... though, because well, said... while I was, you know, dicking around, uh, with the ending, I, I had taken two paths. I had, have completely written, two different endings for this book one of which is very tragic mm. and dangerous because you know it you a dog it, there is a dog no marty you can't yes. it's, a, it's a career ruiner i know that's the thing i remember the conversations that we had <laughs> there's you know uh 
uh, one of the main characters and that character's dog um and get, you know uh kill your darlings oh and the thing is is that happens and it's a catalyst to really piss off the protagonist who just like loses. I mean it works in John Wick I know but <laughs> uh you know I I am I am you know it it scares me but then it's a tragic ending too yeah the, then nobody's happy in the end of the book. Yeah. And I, you know, I like writing action adventures, but I also like happy endings. Yeah, and, you want some uh, I, want, I don't want somebody to throw the book at the wall going, son of a bitch! You, yeah. I can't believe you did that to me! Exactly. Yeah, it's risky, man. I don't know. Yeah, it is I mean, risky. You know, it's... uh, Especially with the ending of the book. I mean, with John Wick, you know, it was in the beginning, and then he just killed everybody. Yeah. You know, in revenge. And it was like, yeah, man, I would do the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, I got to be careful because there was a um, one of the main characters in one of my other novels that I actually killed. And man, that got a lot of e emails from people. Uh -huh. you know, I, I, I'll never forget this irate email, you know, from a 70 year old man that read and loved my book. But I made him cry, and he was really pissed off about that. <laughs> a seventy-eight-year-old man, you said? That's pretty. Seventy. He was seventy. Uh, yeah, that's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, but he was really mad about it because it was his favorite character, and I didn't know it was his favorite character. Sorry, man. You should have told me sooner. Now it's personal. Yeah. So you've been writing all day, is that what you said? Uh, not all day. Um, I have a hard time with in the summer. I, I, I'm a person that, as you, I know you as well, love to be, I love to be outside, especially when the weather's nice. Like, I, it's like, for me, I feel like I am, like, wasting my life. It's a crime when I'm indoors and the weather is beautiful. But the problem with that is then I really write less because when it's rainy and when it's dark, like, I'll be at my computer and I'll be typing. So that's a hard thing for me. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's part of the discipline that I try to exert on myself. So you still do um, it when the weather's nice? You, you know, still get your I get computer? up, I make coffee, you know, I get my, take my coffee, I come and sit in my sit in my office, and I, I'll i write in the morning. You know, sure, I'll yeah. go on Facebook first thing in the morning and line up my tunes for the for the morning and, you know, yeah. do a lot of other stuff. But I, you know, if it, if it gets to be 9 o'clock and I'm not writing yet, I kick myself in the butt. And, um, well, that's true, because then, then you're done by, like, what, like 12? So I was done at one today. Yeah, and then you guys. I, I was on a roll, time. and uh, so I, I I wrote till one o'clock today. And then you can spend the rest of the day outside as you were going. Yeah, to, right. Yeah. Then I uh you know went and had a had a nice lunch with Brenda. Yeah. And uh, I you know piddled around you know the house a little bit. I have taken a nap. There you I go. Nap. Brenda said, "Oh, I'm so tired. I'm going to take a nap." And yeah. uh, I said, "I'm right there with you." <laughs> so yeah i don't know she I mean, took the recliner I'm... and i was on the couch next thing you know it's two hours later i did I not intend a two-hour nap <laughs> occasionally i'll bring like my phone out side you know the back porch or whatever and write on my phone uh, if i just have to be outside and i have to be writing but um otherwise yeah summer can be a challenge for me because i just feel like i just completely lose all my discipline like if it's nice out i cannot i cannot sit at the computer I don't know, man. I, I still gotta. I uh, yeah, no, I, I, know, I, 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 I have to, or it's uh, um, like you can't break um, the habit. You know, you you're uh, you set you've set something there. <laughs> so. Yeah. So. Yeah. So what about you? How how's it going on your end? I know that you got the editing job. You are just focusing on just that. Got the editing job. Um, got the waiting for it to go overboard. I have a book signing coming up. Um, in Richmond, Virginia, which is in two weeks at the uh, Special Olympics, which is very cool. It's a it's a hosted by the University of Richmond, and they bring in people with uh, you know disabilities, and they have uh, proportional challenges for them with trophies and audiences and all that. And uh, well, I don't I don't participate. When I was very young, I participated. Um, I won a lot of trophies in wheelchair racing, which I have to say. 
has nothing to do with skill. It has to do with how fast your chair was, was wired. Um, but hey, I always I always went for the fastest chair as possible. So I, I got all the winning medals and trophies and all that jazz. But um, I was very honored that um, the coordinator of this event wrote me a little note, um, handwritten, and put, put it in the mail and said, hey, we heard about your hockey book. And we heard that, you know, the hockey book is a perfect audience for uh, athletes, um, aspiring athletes that have disabilities and all, uh, since it's about the Paralympic team. And they want me to come and be like, you know, a key booth guest uh, person. So I got to do all that. I got to get a lot of razzle dazzle, my, my colored wheel out, my giveaways, you know, the jazz, you know, yep. that stuff. So I got to do that and make it big. Um, and then, yeah. And then I guess after that, you know, I mean, the summer is going to be gone the blink of an eye. I'll be back at school. Um, but yeah. I'm, I'm on the wait list right now for class. That I hope I get into um, that is about genealogy, and I, I've I've been thinking for a long time. I I'm the type of person that listens and I ask for stories from like my grandparents, my great aunt, um, people that remember this stuff. Uh, and I'd love to one day like write it all down um, for my posterity and you know people after me, because uh, there's some great stories in there about relatives and immigrants, you know, from Italy, from Ireland. Uh, and it, it makes for it's personal to me, of course, but I think it also is just, I think I could write it in an interesting way that would be appealing to, to lots of folks. So interested in doing maybe that uh, for a class. And then that reminds me of a book that I've been reading that I've been liking. It's called Life with Father by Clarence Day. Have you heard of it? No. I hadn't either, but then uh, I realized it was it was kind of like a, quote, classic. Um you know, Reader's Digest has a fancy hardcover version of it <laughs> that I bought. Um, but it's a autobiography, but basically about his dad, this guy's dad, in the late 1800s, turn of the century. So you get all the details about New York City, what it looked like, uh, turn of the century, derby hats, canes, you know, carriages, that kind of thing. Um, but just told in such a way that's so personal. And so, you know, just humorous, like, you know, just the way that you would describe your dad now or I describe my dad now would be like, you know, with so much love, but also like humor, like, you know, this guy's got some weird quirks and this guy's pretty odd. Um, and this guy from the turn of the century did a great job writing that about his dad from another era of history. And I just I thought it was fascinating. So I'd like to write something like that um, myself. My, yeah, my Brenda story. loves. Uh, um, she's. She's got a huge, huge family trees on oh. Ancestry.com, you know, the website. Mm -hmm. she, pay, she pays the monthly thing for uh, for that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Bless you. Bless you. That's good luck. Um, so uh, she's it's really into that. And she's she's done her family tree as back as far as she can find it. She's done mine for, back as far as she, it you should think go. about it, man. You should think about writing like the story of your your ancestors, your relatives. Yeah, there's some interesting ones that, back there. You know, very interesting stories. And oh. uh, um, I wish I had to spend more time with my parents. You know, finding out more stories about stuff. Um, it's amazing how much knowledge is in like a human being, and then when they pass away, you have the grief of losing them, of course. But it's like you also have the grief of like losing everything they knew and everything yeah. that they in, they encountered and the people they knew. Um, so I, I recently trying to do like recording my grandfather while he's doing stories and all that jazz. And I still know I'm just getting the tip of the iceberg. Um, and it's funny because when I'm recording him while I was telling these stories, I'm like, uh, Grandpa, like, how did you like, can you spell the name of this guy? Or I didn't understand what's this guy's name. He's like, oh, it's not important. I'm like, no, Grandpa, it's important. Okay, I have to know his name, you know, to write to write it in the story if I'm ever going to do that. Um, but, you know, people don't really focus on the details. They focus on the big picture, you know, how they felt, what the impact was. So it, it's a little bit hard to be a journalist and a listener and a storyteller and all that put together. But um, it's a pretty beautiful thing when you can create that for your posterity. But, yeah. Yeah, I also think it's a good idea to write your own personal memoirs. Oh I yeah, have, I have a memoir um, project going that I that I work on periodically. Yeah, um, I'm all the way up to 1968. Okay, 
Nice. Are you doing oh. it like you said so you're doing like a chronological highlights of your life kind of thing? Yeah. Right. Just as as little vignette stories. Yeah, and, I love uh, that. Yeah, it's uh it's fun to write them. Uh, Brenda's really encouraged me to do it because um, I have all these stories from my youth. You know, it's not often, you know, a uh, 12 year old yeah. kid finds a case of dynamite in a cave. You know, stuff like that. That's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, I would so, totally pay pay to read your uh, your memoirs, man. That that'd be a, a, an easy sell right here with me. That's uh, right. So, uh, and I, got, I had lots of adventures as a youth. I was yeah. Uh, I was a wild man back in the day. Um, it, oh, and you're a wild man now. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, change. it's really funny. Um, <laughs> um, my wife was uh uh at home visiting yeah and uh while she was there she liked to go to the church that she went to when she was uh growing up and so she was in that church and uh she uh um was talking to some people after the services and stuff and she was describing, you know, she said, oh, I live in Virginia now, and I married mm -hmm. uh, Marty Wilsey. He, you know, grew up in Indian Falls. And yep. a guy standing there goes, Marty Wilsey? One of the oh. Wilsey boys? Oh, no. <laughs> those, those boys were animals. <laughs> That's so funny. That's a compliment. It is funny. It is really, really funny. That's and, a badge uh, of honor. So, uh, um, yeah, the story of why he thinks I'm an animal is definitely going to be in my memoir. Yeah, I was recently asked to do, um, like a bio basically just like a biography of or autobiography of my wife for uh, a newsletter. That, um, it's a long story how I'm connected to the newsletter, but uh, I was writing it and I was like, man, this is like, how do I tackle this? Like, how do, where do I start with my wife? Um, and just literally just trying to do it chronologically, I was just amazed at like how much I remembered and just when you step back and look at the highlights of a life, um, you can really measure up to like, you know, are you going where you want to go? Are you the person you want to be? Are you, uh, are you prioritizing what you want to prioritize? And, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I was pretty happy with, uh, with what I saw and what I have accomplished in 27 years. Um, there's, there was a lot of pretty big highlights. So, um. It, it was a good, uh, it's almost like it's, it's like an, an outline in itself, that little article. Yeah, I know. Outline. And the thing is, is that what really encouraged me to do my memoir um, is uh, my kid's grandfather. Yeah. He had been writing his memoir. Okay. But he died before he could finish it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to write most of it now and yeah, I'm going to get up to present day and yeah. then add chapters as as we go exactly after exactly. that so that it'll be ready to publish you know and embarrass my whole family Amen. You know, at, posthumously oh you, you don't want to deal with the the fallout if you're doing it <laughs> now i'm going to name too many names there you go that's right keep a list man <laughs> i love it i love it yeah, it'll be fun it'll be fun yeah who knows you know if, who knows i might publish it before that but um, yeah, it's, it's definitely fun. Lots of projects to do. I was gonna say, as a writer, man, there's never a shortage of projects to work on. So yeah, I, I know. I, I you know, I got the, my next four books lined up after this one's done, and ah, I keep I keep wanting to do more. I keep coming up more. with these awesome ideas. And do it. That, you know, will elbow their way in the front and stuff like that. Amen, so. brother. Amen. We'll see. You know, just got to keep doing it. As long as I, you know, keep the discipline up, they'll happen. I, I know the feeling. You know, you got, you got, um, from all different kinds of, of angles here, for, at least for me, I got the memoir project, the editing overboard, um, still trying to do some stuff with my agent this year, getting some pitches written. Um, so there's a smorgasbord. So there should be no excuses then, right? You know, if you get, if you That's get right. a, Burnt out on one project, just just pivot. do something, anything, yeah, yep. and then we can uh, beat up Dave to write a novel. Beat up Dave and keep doing the podcast. I like that's it. right. Yep. Yeah, the podcast is just just fun. I mean, it is. 
it's you know yeah. you get together once a week and visit for an hour it's like hey what's not to love absolutely and we've been doing this anyway whether we're recording or not <laughs> yeah i know so. that's the, that's the hilarious funny part that's, that's that, not, uh, not a minute wasted then yep yeah, that's cool so anything else you want to hit before we uh sign off for tonight uh, only, I hope that you guys have been tolerating this creepy eye behind me. Um, I am, I'm at a different location today. I'm in, uh, in New York. So, uh, you, you guys have seen this background before, but I don't know if you've ever seen the eye so prominently next to my head. So hopefully like that it. is like a, yeah, like, you know, it's like a, uh, evil eye. What do they call that thing? The, uh, that everyone wears on their, on their neck and on their, uh, rear view mirror. You know, know that thing? I think it's called an evil eye. Hmm. Look it up. The third eye? I don't know. Bit, yeah. Something spiritualist. But. Yeah, there's a story in there somewhere. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, well, cool. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you see you again next week. Okay. All right, buddy. Yep. All right, chowder.